we are with uh, Bob Diener, who is the CEO of uh, 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 <laughs> and uh, is one of the uh, most relevant uh, uh, people in the travel industry. He was the founder of Hotels.com, and uh, it's a real pleasure to have him uh, with us today. The first question that uh, we have for him is uh, what uh, is behind uh, your new company? What's the value proposition? What makes different uh, get a room to other uh, OTAs or hotel aggregators uh, in, the, in the market? Right. Well, the value proposition for getaroom.com is that we focus on, number one, on the published side of getaroom.com, which are published fares. We focus a lot on flash sales. And, and these are great opportunities for uh, hotel vendors to push out their product uh, in a, and move a lot of inventory in a short period of time and for consumers to make a quick decision because the rate is so good and the value is so good, it entices the consumer to make an immediate decision. And so the vendors and the hotels can move a lot of inventory in a short period of time. Typically the way they work is that a hotel will offer a, a special flash sale for a short period of time. It may be a few hours, maybe 10, maybe 12 hours, maybe a little bit longer. And typically the window to book is extended. So you can typically book for several months out, but if you book it during that window, the consumer will get a great deal. The hotel gets an instant booking, and it's great for the OTA as well because they get a sale. And, and it's a way to get consumers to make a quick decision because we know consumers will shop several sites. They take a while to make a decision. And this way, with a flash sale, they can make an instant decision. We also have a program uh, which we call our unpublished rate program, which we number one use in our call centers. That way we can hide the rate. And we also use them for private membership clubs that qualify for this program. And it's a way for special affinity groups, they either have membership fees or have special qualifications for membership, to receive better rates than what's available out on a public site. Then we have a third part of our value proposition, which is mobile. And we contract with thousands of mobile rates. Uh, our mobile program is growing uh, significantly. Our, um, also, our business is mainly on the back end. We fuel the mobile, uh, we provide the mobile inventory for many other sites that are out there in the marketplace. And our specialty is being able to get out there and contract for special rates for our partners. So you are both B2B and, uh, and B2C then? Uh, yes, we're much more in the B2B space. Most of our business is through partnerships. Uh -huh. And we have a very extensive a team that's out there in most major markets uh, throughout North America, throughout Europe. We're expanding in many more European markets now. We're also expanding uh, shortly into South America and, and into uh, Asia, the region, uh, using very much the same model. Whenever when we contract for a public rate, and we do a lot of flash sales to encourage uh, a lot of activity and uh, bring a lot of values to the consumers, and, and the same also contracting for mobile rates. Now, we see mobile as uh, greatly expanding over the next couple of years. I mean, we've seen a great increase in mobile this past year, and we see greatly increasing over the next two or three years. So uh, anyone that doesn't have a mobile site right now, this is really the time to get on the bandwagon and, and build a mobile site because it is going to be a, just a much greater opportunity going forward. You are talking about flash sales and that uh, brings uh, uh, the uh, uh, reflection about how couponing is affecting the, the, the hotel industry. And uh, at uh, what extent do you think that companies like uh, Groupon or Getaways uh, and uh, in Europe, uh, uh, all their copycats, uh, uh, could become a real relevant player in this uh, space? Or do you think that uh, as they don't have a travel DNA, it will be difficult for them to really understand and make the long-lasting relationship with the hoteliers? Right, well, here's what's happened in the marketplace over the last couple of years. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of last-minute price action, and so the, the behavior of the consumer has become has become an, you know, adapted to waiting to the last minute to find a deal. But the market's gotten much stronger. The hotel economy is much healthier now, and so hotels it's much better for hotels to move more product earlier and then raise their rate and raise their repertoire. That's a much better strategy which is part of the reason why we focused a lot on flash sales, because we do this way in advance and encourages consumers to book a few months out versus waiting to the last minute. 
that once a hotel fills a certain percentage of inventory, they're much more comfortable raising their ADR and keeping at that rate and increasing it as we get closer to check-in. So that's a much better strategy for hotels. So programs and promotions that focus on getting the consumer to book early, even though the rate may be a little bit lower for booking in advance, and it's advanced purchase sales. We're seeing a lot of better rates for uh, booking the room 14 days in advance. We're seeing a lot of 21 day in advance uh, sale rates now. So those are all programs to get the consumer to make a decision <coughs> far in advance so the hotel can raise the rate as we get closer to the check. -in. So all kind of programs that work on that are terrific. The you know, Groupon type of program and similar uh, program are, those are mainly, uh, you need to entice the consumer to buy a certificate for, for something that they haven't yet planned. So that's a little bit more difficult sale, but it's all a matter of what is the value proposition. Is it good value for the consumer, given that they don't necessarily need the product right now? Are they going to spend the dollars on it? Is the value proposition good enough? And is it good enough for the vendor, whether it's a hotel, a restaurant, an amusement? Is it a good enough value? It's all about the value proposition and how the economics work. And we've seen the economics shift quite a bit in that space, uh, because for a time it really was not working that well uh, for a lot of vendors. But it doesn't mean it can't work. It's a matter of uh, how are the economics working and do you have enough of a value proposition for really all the parties involved. Uh, actually, You're not open to economics since uh, so that uh, are not working. Uh, you, they say, no, nah, it's also a part of marketing. <laughs> you just have to get the benefit of the transaction. You, it, you are making marketing of your brand. So <laughs> it compensates the cost of, uh, of this action. So it's... Uh, what you are explaining uh, 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 is actually what the low cost began to do a few years ago. It's lower rates. Uh, if you book uh, really well in advance, and uh, you, the uh, later you book, the more expensive the the, the fare was. So, so it seems that this is a, a, a pattern that the traveler has already accepted. As something normal on the own uh, tr uh, on the flight space, and it seems to be very logical as well on the tra uh, on the hotel. Uh, uh, right. Well, space. certainly, of course, the airlines did extensively in the past. We used to see, uh, you know, 14, 20 million uh, advance purchase fares on for airlines, but the airlines have, have pretty much dropped that pricing strategy and moved to a different type of pricing strategy. A lot of them are pricing one ways. Um, but the hotels have started to jump on the bandwagon and realize this was really a good strategy to uh, encourage consumer behavior to make those purchases in advance. So this is something we s see increasing. Uh, it's, it's, we believe it's a great strategy for uh, uh, all travel vendors. And so we believe it will increase. We're also seeing a lot more sophisticated type of uh, promotions that, that, that vendors are doing. For example, much more personalized to the user, uh, or they may be based on length of your stay. Now, length of a stay is a great type of promotion. For example, we know the typical stay is two nights, especially if it's on a weekend. Well, promote the stay for a third night. It's worth giving. We know that you know Sundays are typically very light, in, in, uh, especially in, in, in many major U.S. markets, also similar patterns in Europe. Uh, so encouraging the travel to stay that Sunday night uh, even at a lower rate, is, 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 it's usually worth giving that type of uh, special rate to encourage them to come in that night because they you know, have all the ancillary revenue that comes along with that. So length of stay promotion is something we see increasing. Uh, also your day of check-in. Are they checking in on a weekday? So if they need business for check-in, say on Sunday, they check in on Monday, it may be a smart strategy for the vendor to offer better pricing for checking in that day. And if you check in that day, your rate for the whole stay may be better. So we're seeing that the uh, vendors, especially in the lodging industry, are getting much better in these pricing strategies as the, uh, as the technology gets much more sophisticated. So actually you help the, in the hoteliers, the, your vendors, to define better strategies uh, in order to uh, increase their revenues and be uh, more profitable. So uh, you almost uh, behave as uh, the revenue uh, department for the, the hotels that cooperate with, uh, with get, uh, get a Room. Right, well, we try to put ourselves in the shoes of the hotelier and say, what makes sense for them? What business can we bring in that's incremental? Uh, what kind of pricing strategy can we, or promotion strategy can we recommend 
that will increase business overall, that will bring in new kind of business. And so, and so those are the promotions that we tend to focus on because they work well for the hotel, they work well for the consumer, and we're out there in the marketplace promoting them. Uh, that, this would be one of uh, your big difference with a wholesaler, with a big bank, that basically would dance is just take the inventory and the, the fares that the hotel has previously created and distribute it uh, all uh, across the different channels, but it's not directly involved in helping the hotel to define new product or new kind of uh, or tariff, no? This would be one of the right, big differences. The, these are very, uh, the hotels have different, different means of distribution. So those are very different forms of distribution. Those are pricing that's done way in advance, based on knowledge at the time. Uh, it's typically done uh, for a package market or for certain types of market. And so the pricing strategy is different. Uh, the booking patterns are different. So we know that uh, wholesalers will have uh, typically much further in advance booking patterns. We know that the hotel itself has a booking window that's longer than we have, for example, or other OTAs have. The OTA window tends to be much closer to check-in. We're working to expand that out. We know that our booking window is different than the hotels. But that's good for the hotel because we can do a lot of promotions within our booking window with our customers to bring a lot more business to that property that they're otherwise not getting. Uh, so each, each really more, each, each, there are a lot of different segments. Uh, but we work in a segment that's much more dynamic and where we can, uh, you know, really working on the pricing and the promotion and the timing can bring a big difference to meeting the hotel's needs where they have gaps. Uh, what's your vision about the evolution of the hotel distribution in the next uh, five years? It seems that the lines between B2B and B2C are blurring and uh, those companies uh, that at the beginning were exclusively B2Cs and were really focused on uh, acquiring clients now are creating product and contracting directly most of the inventory and actually behaving as a pure B2B company uh, and they are beginning also to uh, feed uh, other uh, competitors uh, with that inventory in this friend enemies uh, environment. Do you think this will be the trend or what was your vision well, about that? Definitely, we're definitely seeing shifting, uh, shifting types of uh, promotions, shifting types of distribution. But I think what we're going to see is is, is really a more efficient and more sophisticated type of, of, of distribution that looks more towards what type of person is, where they're originating from, what is their booking pattern, how long are they staying, when are they booking, uh, uh, the region that they're coming from, the type are they, are they traveling as an individual, are they traveling as a group, how large is the group. So there's a lot of different factors I think will come into play and, and, and I think the distribution strategy going forward is going is to really more evolve around behavior and, and the types of stay, the types of customers and so on. I guess that uh, big data or uh, the right use of big data will influence a lot all what you have said. No, the, yes, the, the, the more right. data the better. Uh, data, the, the, the data that's out there and mining the data and really using the data to, to Do you think that the travel companies will be capable by themselves to manage that information or there isn't a space for all the technological companies especially devoted to help them to manage this large amount of information? Right. Well, this is definitely a crowded space, but it doesn't mean there's not room for innovation. <laughs> so there's always room for innovation. And we see every year you know, at, the, yeah. at the focus, right? At, new at companies. <laughs> many new companies are coming out with new ideas, with new strategies. You know, my first question to them always is, what is your value proposition? What are you bringing to the marketplace that's different? What's your value proposition for the consumer? What's your value proposition for the vendors you work with? What's your value proposition for your partners and affiliates and so forth? What's your business model? Do they have really sound economics? Hmm. I see a lot of companies here that uh, they may have great ideas, but they, they haven't figured out how to monetize what they have yet. Uh, so, uh, but even though it is crowded, again, I still believe that there's a lot of room for innovation. There's a lot of room for thinking outside the box and coming up with needs, but you need to find what are those needs. What do you bring into the marketplace that's not there? How do you make the marketplace more efficient? And there's no question that, that, that by bringing more efficiencies to the marketplace, making it easier for the consumer, making the distribution of the product uh, much more streamlined, if you can do it in a way that, uh, that, that improves what's out there now, then, then, then you can bring a viable product to the marketplace. There's always plenty of room for, for the right ideas and the right execution of those ideas.
And that's very good advice for entrepreneurs. Uh, there is always room for new ideas, but uh, you have to focus on uh, identifying the problem, solving the problem in a profitable and feasible uh, way. There's no question. You should always, you should always have, you should always have as part of, as part of your, uh, uh, as part of your business plan, a real, a real sound economic plan for how are you going to make this profitable? How are you going to make it a real business? Some as businesses have succeeded by doing it much later on, but they've spent a fortune on the way. On the way. Yeah. Many have not succeeded. So yeah. my philosophy and advice is always start smaller, execute on your idea, make sure it works. Make sure your business model works, and then you can grow. As a serial entrepreneur, I will ask you uh, to give uh, uh, an advice uh, for the Spanish uh, entrepreneur, because the, uh, the the government has uh, is betting uh, heavily as uh, on uh, on entrepreneurs as a way to uh, end up with the crisis, and, uh, and we tend to say that there is not the same infrastructure that you can find in the States with all the active VCs and with a culture of innovation. But uh, I, I guess that uh, there is always, uh, always a possibility to do uh, new things. So for that uh, young people that are beginning uh, with their uh, startups, what will be your uh, advice? Well, I mean, number one, obviously where they are and, and, and Incentives that are placed by, by by the country that they're in can make a big difference. Uh, you know, the United States is very easy to do business. Uh, it's a huge marketplace. There's many small countries around the world that have special incentives for entrepreneurs that encourage uh, entrepreneurship type of activity. They encourage taking risks because it is taking uh, the entrepreneurs take risk. Uh, and there's the right tax incentives. There's the right uh, the right resources and so forth out there for entrepreneurs to succeed. So assuming you're in that type of market, um, number one, you need to really you need to do your homework. It's always a matter of doing your homework. I see a lot of entrepreneurs just don't do their homework. They don't know what the competition is. They think they have the greatest idea, but it's already done. It's already in the marketplace. They just haven't found it. So you really need to do your homework. Really find out who's out there. Really figure out how much you have is unique. How is it different? How does it bring you real value? And how are you going to execute it? And how are you going to execute in a cost-effective way? You know, I see so many people they have great ideas for sites, and they say they're going to monetize it by advertising. Well, there's very few sites that have been successful just with advertising. Some have, but very few. Very few. That typically doesn't work. So what is your real business model? Right, so these are the type of things you really need to think through before you spend a lot of money. So, very good advice. <laughs> It's and great being with you today, and unfortunately, I have. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure to have you, and uh, and uh, I'm sure that in the next future there will be new projects uh, coming from 